If you're feeling like you're stuck in a bit of an echo chamber of information, today's guest is sure to show you a different way. I'm chatting with German photographer Annika Lara. She started off as a wedding photographer, then transitioned into pets and opened a studio space, which she now shares with a newborn photographer, even though she is combining shooting with travel and often has clients out of town or even out of Germany. If your ears perked up at travel, you will love the strategy that Annika used to get her first few international clients, and it is something that you can do right now. Now, if Annika's name rings a bell, no doubt it's because you've seen that she's an instructor for this year's retreat in Tuscany. You can join her for a shoot or two to learn how she captures that gorgeous connection between people and their pets that you'll hear her discuss in this interview. Plus, at the retreat, her classroom workshops will help you to better prepare your clients to create a look of harmony and then take that a bit further by learning her editing style as well. You want to join us and the other instructors and attendees? Bookings close on Friday, January 20th. That's in about 48 hours uh, from now. Tickets are 2,290 euro. They include or it includes absolutely everything from when you arrive in Pisa. You'll be meeting us at the Leaning Tower of Pisa where we have some dogs waiting to photograph. We'll then take you by bus out to our beautiful accommodation in the Tuscan countryside. Food isn't included, accommodation is included, and of course, all of the tuition and the photo shoot workshops as well and the dog models too. So if you're interested, you've got just 48 hours left to grab your ticket from when this interview drops, head on over to retreat.thepetphotographersclub.com to learn out more. To learn more. (laughs) Welcome to the Pet Photographers Club. Tune in as experts share their insights to help grow your business with higher sales, creative marketing, and kick arse business strategies. Now on to the show. Hello and welcome back to the Pet Photographers Club. I'm Kirsty McConnell and today I'm speaking to a special guest Joining us from Germany is Annika. I don't know how to pronounce your business name, Annika. <laughs> let you do that because my German is worse than my Italian and that says a lot. So if you can take it away and introduce yourself to the listener, a bit about your business, where you are based in Germany and, and yeah, how you got started. Okay. So hi, nice to be here. And I, I know my, my business name is not that comfortable for the English ones. <laughs> it's called Zellfreundschaften in Germany. And when I started doing some or taking some photos and starting my business, I was not thinking about growing that much because when I was, when I was thinking about growing that much, I would, maybe I have chosen another name for it, <laughs> but it's okay. As you said, I'm based in Germany. I'm in a small town. I started the photography, but for about 12 years now, and I got full, full-time photographer for about four years now. I got into photography through my first own dog, Pebbles. She's not living anymore. And she was once posing as a model for a different photographer. I haven't even seen someone making or taking pictures of dogs. Someone was coming to me and asked if she, if it would be okay to do some photos of her. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. And totally fascinating. This moment was like magic to me and opened up my eyes. I was in my early 20s, I think no plans for my future or any career aspirations i was i went from job to job and drifted a lot and immediately after this shooting with my dog i bought my first camera and practiced every day i i i'm doing so much photos from all of my friends my whole family and yeah it became a passion for me but i didn't believe that i would be a self-employed one day. Yeah. So I tried many different areas, 
first portray photography, then I went to family and then everything ended up with weddings and then I stayed there for a whole while and I was a full-time wedding photographer before I started taking pictures of humans with their dogs. So Alec, yeah. when did that switch happen? So you got into photography quite a while ago now, you kind of were doing it on the side, I guess, because you said you went full-time four years ago. Yes, only for four years now. Okay. And then, so when you went full-time, were you still predominantly weddings or had you already made the switch to pet? I started with weddings and the turn to dog photography came because one of my besties, she, she gets a puppy and she was asking me taking pictures from her and her puppy. And I always was... I always were, were making pictures from from wedding uh, from weddings or from loved ones or for elopments or something like this and there were only people who love each other looking at each other they were laughing with each other and running through the streets and something like this and I had no idea how to get this into dog photography and so I tried to make the same thing I was just making with my couples who love each other, couples who were laughing with each other. And now there was a human with her puppy and I had no idea how to shoot them. And all that I could do is the same thing I do with my couples. And it works. It works so good that after that shooting, I was totally nuts. I went totally nuts. I was so happy with the pictures and she was also happy with the pictures. And it was not that easy to take pictures of her. It is, it is not even today <laughs> because she's a critic. She's really critical. And with that pet, with that little puppy, you haven't had any control of your of your whole face because she was not sitting quiet or something like this. And you have no time to think about. And that that was the key to get those authentical pictures. Mm -hmm. And after that shoot, I decide to go in this direction. I decide to take pictures of humans with their dogs that are not like you have seen so many times. Yeah, I, I wanted to do it. Yeah, I wanted to do something else, something different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that really shows in your work as well. I mean, if you haven't seen Annika's work, jump on over to her Instagram. I will put a link in the show notes for you guys or on her website as well. And you will see straight away, oh, it makes sense that you were used to photographing relationships between people. And now you've substituted one of those people for a dog or added yeah, a dog. Right. Still about relationships. Yeah. And that's super beautiful and powerful. And honestly, I think it's what differentiates your work from a lot of what we're seeing at the moment, because clearly you're taking inspiration from, from other things that are not pet photography. I, I can't imagine you follow many pet photographers, do you? Yes. I always try to not, I always tried not to draw my inspiration from dog photography because there are so many of us and it it is it not feels like it's my way to taking pictures it it always feels like i'm doing something i am not born for it and my biggest inspiration after all of the after all of my journey my biggest inspiration is really or was my my dog my own dog i was just sitting on my on my couch and cuddle her a lot and i was thinking about it would be great if someone would take a picture of this because this is what we are and this is what we do all day mm -hmm. we are not that much in action she was she was really fixated on me and that that had a big impact on my early photos and i have only changed i at when i started i only started with home sessions because in my opinion in the home session situation there was the, the dogs are the most comfortable situation for them it's the most comfortable situation for the dogs doing photo shootings at home and that and not going into different areas even though i have a studio right now it's easier for dogs to do it at home because when you come to your clients and you started with coffee and not you are not coming and take and take your camera right out and make and do some shoots right at the beginning and you start with some coffee and that okay she's here but she's she's fine she's like a friend of my 
my parents <laughs> and then that that really works good but ooh, 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 one moment but at some point at some point there were a dog and came in front of my camera and they wanted to do a home story and cuddling a lot and she, and the dog were not a cuddling one yeah. it was the owners who wanted to do those pictures because they like my pictures they they have seen on instagram but it was not the right one for their own dog mm -hmm. and then i was thinking about okay not every dog is a cuddling one and and at some point there are situations i bring them into situations they don't feel comfortable with and i was doing home sessions and studio shootings for two years and i have to say in the first pandemic there were 100 puppies or so in two months i was shooting every day five yeah. or six shootings it was it was i can't even say how it was and then i came to that point i wanted to see something else i realized it's okay to do other photos too to have more action and then i decided to go out i think instagram is the best place to look at your work because you see so many images in a collection you know and every image at first you don't even realize if it's inside or outside or in a home or in a, a street the lighting all matches the colors all match it just looks like so yeah harmonious is, is the only way I can really describe your work which is actually what drew me into finding out more about you in the first place because I remember I think it was Sarah recommended me to look into your work she's one of the instructors at the retreat as well and um and I opened it just like oh wow because it's so unique to pet photography it's so different to what we're seeing you know what's in fashion at the moment and these relationships are so natural that you're capturing. And it's, you know, whether it's inside or outside is almost irrelevant now. So I can totally appreciate why you started shooting outside as well. Because my dog, one of them, is the non-cuddly dog. <laughs> so yes. you would yeah. not be able to photograph him in my home. But somehow, you or not somehow, with a lot of skill, you, you've brought that same style to inside or outside. So it's... Uh, the background is irrelevant. I also want to learn a little bit about your studio, which you mentioned earlier. I know it's completely natural light. There are very few photographers, I think, that open a studio and let alone in a tiny town that you mentioned. So tell us about <laughs> that, the theory behind it. It was always my dream to have my own studio because... As I told you, when I started, I started with home sessions and not every home is with a perfect light for doing some photos it's not always the furniture it's always mm. about the light there are not big windows uh, windows or i don't know i have one client she has a red couch and i don't like to have it in red and then i was thinking about making my own studio and when you are thinking about a studio you are not thinking about a studio like mine i think so because actually it's i have to search for the word okay Okay. Because it's a furnished apartment, we have a kid's room, we have a bathroom, we have a kitchen. It looks like someone is living there. <laughs> and that's the, the first question everyone is asking me when they come for a photo shooting. They say, and you are living here? And I, I'm, I'm like, no, it's just for photo shootings. Mm -hmm. And they are, really? You could live here? And I could live there because everything is there. But for me, it was always, always important to have it the comfortable ways and you feel comfortable when you come into a studio and it feels like your own home except of the better lights and the and for me the better colors yes and then i created my own second apartment if you would say <laughs> it's like something like this and i don't do it by my own i have i have my bestie Silke with me she's making newborns and families and baby bellies and something like this and we share it and that's perfect because we are not sharing only the costs of the studio we are inspiration for each other because she has a different area she is shooting she's shooting newborn and families and she's doing it a whole different way than i am shooting we are so different in working but we are so good in being colleagues 
and being friends mm-hmm. for each other and being inspiration for each other and that's that's a that's a big thing i am not alone in my whole business i have my my own business but i have friends they are my colleagues and i can i can share everything i have in my mind with them and they give me feedback and something like this i think that would be a dream for a lot of photographers <laughs> I mean, yeah, but some... you can make it come true. You can, you can, it's not that difficult, I think. Mm-hmm. So we have met for six years now or seven years now. We have met the first time and she's really good at networking. And she was thinking about, okay, Annika is different than I am, but she's a kind one. <laughs> Maybe it would be, a, it, it would be great to work with her. And it really works well. There are so many photographers who are, who are alone and i think if you are doing all all of it all alone it's not that that yeah it's not feeling that good then you have someone you can share everything with definitely i know i moved i worked from home for for years and shooting on location though And then I moved into a co-working space. So there was myself and I think in the one room, like the, we had a desk each. And so there was myself, an architect, an interior architect, another photographer, but she did families and weddings and yeah. a graphic designer and her assistant, myself and my assistant. So all of us worked together in one room with just a desk. And then we had a second room, which was just for meetings. And it was so nice because it was like going into a workplace, but still being self-employed. And so it was this beautiful blend. And I think, you know, you've replicated this kind of vibe, but with just one other person and and in a situation that suits you. I mean, you need a studio, so did she. Your studio is exactly what suits your work, which is not like, I feel like some people would think that the best way or or the only way is to rent or, or, or own a studio space and try to make it look like an apartment. But you just went the complete direct route of just finding the apartment <laughs> with the right light and yeah. making it a studio. <laughs> right? I think it's perfect. And you get to share it with somebody so that you're not alone, you know, in your work and you get to share the wins and and have somebody to discuss the hard parts with as well and yeah it's really nice I think I can totally yeah, it's see like that. it's like you say teamwork makes the dream work and it's really true <laughs> because yeah. we are inspiration for each other and sometimes I'm totally different working than her and sometimes it's so nice to see how she is doing and to have a different oh, I have to start with the word perspective yeah you know, yeah yeah you have a different perspective how another photographer who's who's doing the photos in the same room than I am doing the photos and it's it looks totally different because she's tiny <laughs> I'm normal I would say and she's a tiny one and she's she's fast at shooting she only shoots i would say 45 minutes with the families and the kids but i can understand that kids are not that good at staying that long they would not <laughs> stay with me three hours <laughs> dogs are cool with it because they can sleep but kids they don't want to be with me three hours but i think that is a big big is the word impact i have to search for impact. Yep, yep. yeah it's a big impact that that she's doing newborn and families and I can see how she's doing that. And then I can, then I can take it and do it on my own photos and the other way around, the other way around. She's seeing what I am doing with the dogs and some of my puppy photos are looking like newborns. I know that (laughs) and people love that. And that's the reason why because i'm as i told you at the beginning my inspiration is not only from other dog photographers and i the whole day i'm seeing newborns then i I'm, i was thinking about okay why don't we do it this way like they do it and that's why i travel a lot because when i when i was a wedding photographer i wanted to do destination weddings and 
the way to do destination weddings is to have or to build up a portfolio and offer it and say i'm here i would shoot to to have to have pictures you can show them and that's a good example that i try to get my inspiration from other areas because i was thinking about why i don't do this with dog photography why i have to do it all here and all at home why i can do it in tuscany or in spain or something there are people with dogs all over the world and yeah that's why i travel now that's mm -hmm. one reason i travel now because the idea came from wedding photography mm -hmm. i can see the impact of other genres really strongly in your work and your business as well so let's actually talk about that because you know you've just started by saying or this half of the episode by saying that you know you love shooting in people's homes because you get to you know really capture that true relationship they have with their pet and the cuddles and the couch and these things and then you realize not every home is suitable so you launch this studio but now you, you want to do lots of traveling and you are doing lots of <laughs> away from the yeah. studio I really want to dive into that and find out how clients are finding you where you're going but I'm actually going to keep that for the second half of this interview which is for members only we always try to keep some juicy stuff for them so I think let's wrap up part one now before we do that can you just tell the listener where the best place is to find you. I have mentioned Instagram and your website links will break be in the show notes. Is there anywhere else that the listener should go to find out more about you and your work? <laughs> I have to say most of the time you can find me on Instagram and I would say 90% of my clients are from Instagram. I'm very present there i'm i'm often there i like it i like to interact and you you can get the best impression of me and my work when you follow my instagram because i am showing not only my work and some behind the scenes you can get you can see my life my dogs my home the way i am and i think I'm really near to my clients. It's not just shooting when you are coming and take pictures with me. It's not just shooting. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> Some clients, when they read it the first time, they are like, oh my God, we are three hours, three to four hours it takes to make pictures with me. And some of them are afraid at the beginning, but when they are there, time is flying. And for me, it's very important to have coffee with them to talk with them to not only take pictures of them but to get to know each other and i think that's some some of the reason my pictures are that natu natural looking because people feel comfortable with me mm. and it's not only taking good pictures and see perfect light that's also a big thing about it but if you don't have clients, they feel comfortable in front of the camera. You you can't have the best light. It won't look like this. And if you want to see how I work, you have to follow me on Instagram. I would say yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So definitely go and check out her Instagram. Start there. And, and then, of course, we can meet in person at the retreat. And I'm really excited to be there. All right, so that was all for part one of the episode. If you're a member of the club, of course, you can continue listening now to part two in the member zone or via your private RSS feed in your favorite podcast player. Don't forget, if you're not a member yet, you can join today.